This week's guest has had a lifelong addiction to competition. Former motocross racer, now three-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier, Hunter Shryock on... I'm Bob Cobb from the Bassmaster. Welcome to Mercer. Friends, family, freeloaders, fishing freaks, welcome back once again to the Awkwardly Honest Fishing Podcast that goes by my last name, which is Mercer. I am Dave Mercer, and this week's going to be a little bit more awkward and um, a lot more honest. Because clearly, if I'm going to gloat when my Chiefs win, I have to address it when they lose and um congratulations to the cincinnati Bengals and and joe burrow i mean incredible performance um and, and good luck in the super bowl i think two things were proved this week uh number one Kansas City proved no matter how good your team is you cannot win by playing one half of football um I don't, I don't even have an answer for what happened. Um, it was an implosion. Um, but they also proved another thing. Um, and, and I appreciate this because, weirdly enough, when the Chiefs lost, the group that I heard the most from was Bills fans, kind of, you know, rubbing it in my face. You know, I don't know what we were celebrating. We're both losers now. Yes, we are. There's only two teams that have a chance of being winners but they proved one thing this week. I mean, the Kansas City Chiefs went to incredible distances and effort to prove to you Buffalo Bills fans that although the OT rule does suck, it a coin flip does not decide your game if your defense shows up. That That's, that's what I'm sticking with, okay? Um, we'll be trash-talking lots in the future. I mean, the Bills, the Chiefs, the Bengals, there's so many teams that are going to battle it out in the AFC, but the Chiefs are no longer there. So I, I congratulate all the Bengals fans. It's amazing how many more of you there is after the game. I've never heard from any of them before the game. Um, and I congratulate, of course, the Rams. I mean, an incredible team making a big charge. And uh, Matt Stafford, who can't be happy for that? Two incredible stories with both quarterbacks going to be in the Super Bowl. But that's enough of that. I need to move past this because I get angry when I talk about it. Um, so the season starts in like a week. Next week this time, I'll be in Florida getting ready for the season, which is startling to me. Um, turns out I'm not going to lose that 100 pounds I was planning on losing um, <laughs> before the season starts. Um uh, basically, fishing's version of Oprah. I mean, you never know which one will show up. I mean, sometimes I'm skinny, sometimes I'm 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 a little more fluffy. Um, but I, I I try to always show up. I mean, that's that's what I want to point out. Anyways, enough of my rambling. We have an incredible guest here this week, and um, an incredible competitor. Because the one thing that stands out to me is just how addicted to competition he is. And, and I don't need to talk about him anymore. I mean, but, well, I will talk about him a little bit because this dude did something that I think is amazing. At one time, it felt like half the fishing industry wanted him not to focus on tournaments and wanted him to just start shooting videos for them because he is that talented. But he kind of pushed the immediate money away and focused on his goal. And that's why he is a three-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier. And that's also why he is our guest here this week. Let's welcome him in, Hunter Shryock. Hunter Shryock, I have a, a, I gotta admit something. I mean, we're, we're, we're live now, but I gotta admit something. We're live. I get nervous every, so this is a true story, every single time I say, I don't think I've ever told you this, but every single time I say your name on stage or here or anywhere, I literally, because I once screwed it up and calls you your brother. And I mean, I introduced your brother for a number of years before I introduced you, yeah. but it literally has been, it's like a phobia. I mean, it, it's, 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 so I'm just, it I'm putting it out there right now. Is it the pronounce? Is it the pronunciation of it? Or is it like just straight up calling me the wrong name? No, straight up calling you Fletcher. I mean, I, I did it once. I think I did. And I was I like, I, and it's I, you so. You just yourself. 
Uh, no, no. See, he, here's what I've learned. Just throw it out there. And now if I yeah. screwed up, people would be like, yeah, see, he was, he was honest. Yeah. But you were, uh, def- you were definitely the first person to ever do that too. Ever in my life. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. It never, ever <laughs> happened. I, no, only down to my parents. I'd still, I still get the same thing. So <laughs> that's what you have. That's what you get when you have brothers or siblings, yeah. I should say. Yeah. It's always like a mumbled, uh, Hunter, yeah. You don't know it's going to come out, but. Well, have you guys always been into the same stuff too? Like, I mean, Uh, seems like it from the outside. Yeah, yeah, for the most part. So, so I got two other brothers, one younger, one older, and so yeah, I'm used to being called all all sorts of names. I just know if it's directed at me, yeah, it's me. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever that is. Well, I mean, so, I'm, I'm always mean you. Just no matter what comes yeah. out, I always mean you, just so you know. You can um, be like fl- Fla Hunter. That's a common one. Fla Hunter. <laughs> Fla Hunter. Fla Hunter. Fla right. Hunter and Felicia. There you uh, go. Uh, there you go. Well, I'm not using as quick uh, the uptake. But you know, <laughs> at one point in your life, uh, let's jump right into this, but at one point in your life, you wanted to fish the Elite Series, and it felt like to me that the entire fishing industry wanted you to do nothing but just make videos. Uh, you remember like, <laughs> running the camera yeah. boat? There was a lot of people who were like, stop following your dream and do this. And yeah. most people would have flipped. Like, be honest, you know that. The industry is right. full of marketing people that said, hey, I got to go get a job. How right. did you know that uh, I'm not doing it? I... I mean, it's just one step after another, right? I think we can all relate to that in our own lives about, yeah. you know, the steps that have been taken to get to wherever you're at, you know, whatever job you're in, it was a decision that you made and a yes here and a no there. And now we're here type of ski for me to write it down and for it to work like it has, like I wouldn't have never thought it, but I wanted to at least give it that chance to try to qualify. And if it didn't, uh, just fall back on the filming or whatever else. But in my gut, it was like, I, I need to fulfill that. Or you're going to look back and be like, you know, one day, you know, you sissy, why didn't you try it? Why didn't you, you know what I mean? And it just so happened to work out and qualify. Cause it's not, it's not easy to qualify. There's a lot of good guys that don't right off the bat. It's, you know, and it took me a long time of learning and, you know, everything fell into place one year uh, to make it. So uh, but yeah, it's been a, a crazy road from just like not knowing anything about cameras, starting off filming, um, and then getting somewhat good at that uh, more so just fishing related. Right. Like yeah. it was, you know, five years ago, it was a whole different world. And then now you look at where we're at now. It's like, I mean, we seen it coming, especially me and you being uh, on that side of it. Like you knew it was going to come to this. I just didn't think it was going to happen this fast. Yeah. Would you shocking. agree? A hundred percent. I mean, it shocks me. <laughs> like, and even every like year, like, yeah, yeah, like even this year, like a couple of years ago, people are like, well, is TV going to be worth less? And I'm like, well, forever it's going to, but, but it feels right. like everything is changing and like, and you got to be everywhere. Like everywhere. back in the day, people wanted you to just make videos. Now, yeah. how many videos do you, you have to make? Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's not even your job anymore. <laughs> exactly yeah it's still part of the job i mean a big part of the job really to still create content and everything but yeah. it's just uh you know to see where where it's come from like you know that's basically what got me a job is there is a void in the industry and a lot yeah. of industries really that didn't have that you know and now social media has just exploded and you know content is king you can't make enough of, like you said you got to make you know every day you know you got people making instagram reels to YouTube shorts, you know, yeah. it just can't be a YouTube video anymore. You got to have 80 different outlets to, to try to plug in. So uh, it, it's going to be interesting in the next five, 10 years. Who knows? <laughs> How much harder has that been for you as an angler? When I look at like, yeah. it's easy to be the early adapter when you're just trying to make end ways into the industry. But, but right. I mean, I, I got to imagine it's incredibly hard to stay on top of that stuff. It is. And that's like a big focus for me the past couple of years. It's like I kind of reverse engineered my way <laughs> into the industry where typically guys fish and catch them. Right. And 
through the tournaments and, and create that platform. And then they start, you know, doing the social media stuff and, and start rolling with it where I'm like, did the social media didn't catch nothing and then start to catch some bass and, and start to flip flop that. But really it's, it's time management. You know, you only get so many days in a year and it just, it consumes a lot of your time to be not only filming, but editing, as you know, it just takes a lot of time to do it. So for me, it's like, you know, am I going to be the film guy or am I going to be, you know, elite series angler? And so the past couple of years, it's real, I've, you know, it's been really tough because you have to decide, you know, you can make money on certain this and that and da, 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 da. But it just comes down to, I need to fish as much as I can. I need to be learning as much as I can. And, you know, it's kind of showed results wise, but, um, you know, just putting your focus on fishing, like it's, it's tough to do, but I, I have to do it. <laughs> It's the weirdest thing about anybody that makes a living from fishing, whether it be TV or tournaments or whatever, you work so hard and nobody wants to do anything at the beginning. You, you've got all the time right. in the world to fish. And then when you somewhat make a spot for yourself, the job becomes just being able to get away and fish. I mean, yeah, it, it is. It, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. How do you, I mean, is how does that get set up in your line of work? Like, do you like, do, is there a certain time of the season where you ask sponsors to kind of give you space or, or is it just, yeah. you got to fit it in? Yeah. I mean, I'll definitely try to fit in stuff, you know, where it needs to be done. And a lot of that comes like at the beginning of the year, like now, like yeah. asking everyone up front, Hey, what are you looking for? Because we've already been to this rodeo. How many times you don't get, get a whole lot of stuff. It, it's going to be quick stuff, you know, photos, this or that while we're at the events, because a lot of our stuff is jam packed at the beginning yeah. of the year, right? We got the first half of the year is going to be boom, what happened? Um, and, and so content wise, it's, it's going to be on the go content. Um, so all this stuff that they need, like, you know, longer term stuff, I try to start preparing or where we're going to fit that in at. So a yeah. lot of it's just planning, right. And being at trying to be ahead of the game on that. And, and a lot of the sponsors are really good. They, they understand what's going on. So they'll, they'll send me a note or something and check up on me. Hey, can we get this done? Can we get that? Um, and you just try to manage, try to squeeze it in when you can. <laughs> but um, it's been a lot better than in years past, I, I would say, because in years past, I've overwhelmed myself with it to the yeah. point that, you know, I was, I would say I was working I was putting in six months of work editing and filming and then also fishing or trying to fish and be competitive and it wasn't working <laughs> on either <laughs> like, end too. Right. Like, cause it, yeah, you, like, you can't yeah, be creative and rushed and, you, and no. vice versa. You can't see the right. water the way you need to and be exactly. rushed either. Yeah. Because it's like, when you go out, it, it would just be, it would be a, a day, especially when I lived in Ohio, like, I don't have very many places to fish for one good places, yeah. right? To become good, you need to be catching fish. So you need a place that has fish to catch. <laughs> that's, that's problem. Number one, number two, if you only go fishing once or twice a week and now you're fishing on places that don't have bass, what are you doing? You know, you're not accomplishing a whole lot. So my lessons, my major lessons were all coming from the opens or the elite series, very bad places to always be learning <laughs> these expensive. valuable lessons. Yeah. Expensive and not very fun. So learn, you know, obviously, and you're always going to learn those lessons regardless, but I, you know, you can be in those situations a lot more often at places that have bass and not, you know, like I said, running myself rampant, but at the same time, that's what I had to do, you know, financially at, the, you know, at, everything was moving and flowing and you need money and this and that. And, you don't have a choice sometimes. So yeah. it's one of those deals that, like I said, the, the track record that it's taken for me to get from point A to point B, it's just been, you know, little, little dots all over the road. But, you know, here we are and it's trying to like now figure out how to win a blue trophy. And that's like all I've been thinking about for the past year or two. Like, how do you get that mindset now to win a blue trophy? Because at the end of the day, I mean, qualifying for the classic is great that's always a goal. Right. And that's been like my main goal for the past 
you know, every year I fish is yeah. they qualify for the classic, but it takes a special person to always be thinking about winning the event, you know, each one that you fish, or at least the ones that, you know, are setting up right for you that week to be like, I need to put the pedal down now. So trying to get in that head for, because there's, there's a lot of guys that can't do it. And there's a few guys that can, and, yeah. and I'm just like trying to figure that out. Like how, how do you get from, you know, mediocre 50 place finishes to top tens and how do you get from top tens to that first place finish? So that's the goal now, or at least you know, like setting yourself up being down here. We moved to Tennessee and that's a whole nother story. I don't know if you want to go there or not, but you talked about, <laughs> you talked about having this, uh, this off season being stressful and stuff, which don't get me wrong. It has been with manufacturers, everything being, you know, behind yeah. everyone knows the drill. Uh, last year at this time, we had the long, was it COVID season basically, yeah. right? We ended at Fork. Yeah. When was that? November? Oh, yeah, it was late. Yeah, November, late November, I think, too. Yeah. Maybe at least mid November. So, a couple of months before that, we're like, we just need to put our house up for sale. We just need to do it. So, because we're going to be gone for those last couple tournaments, we'll put it up for sale to see what happens. Well, it sold in a day, right? That's the market we were in. <laughs> And we had no plans whatsoever. So now we got three tournaments left. We had Gunnersville, Santee, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Fort. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And Fort. And so while we're at those places, or Chickamauga, not Santee. That's right. Yeah. I don't know. Chick was the remember. second last one. Yeah. yeah. Or no, it doesn't matter. Never mind the details. <laughs> okay. So there was three tournaments <laughs> left and you have no house. I have, no, I, we're in the middle of selling the house. Okay. So we're at Chickamauga. We're at Chickamauga. We had this real estate agent, notary, drive down to sign our papers that we sold the house. <laughs> we're on the road in a truck camper. Okay. We leave Lake Fork, move all, we have two days to get all of our stuff out of our house. Pack up a Penske truck, drive to Tennessee. Don't have any place to go. We drop our stuff in a storage unit. Okay. And start house hunting out of our truck. We're in a truck camp. We're staying at the Dayton boat dock <laughs> thing wow. at the campground. Okay. Now it's December and it's 20 degrees at night. We're staying in a truck camper. You want to talk about stress? That is stressful because you are looking, you, you have no idea what, what's going to pop up on the market and every house that's good. It's sold like the yeah. day before. And not only that, but we're getting a boat, we're getting it rigged, <laughs> we're getting sponsors set up. It, it was a zoo. So to go through that and and to to do it this year is like, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> it's easy now. It's easy. It's easy now. Yeah, because what I went through before that was hell. Like I I couldn't I wouldn't wish wish that upon my worst enemy. <laughs> uh, and that's the that's the crazy thing about this gig like i don't think he, people realize the time commitment that it takes like when when you have something like that happen or if you have a kid and you have different you know what i mean like di all these things that happen throughout your life i mean yeah. it's easy when you you're just it's just you it but the, yep. as you get older in this sport it almost seems like it gets tougher just because now you have that life other pressure happening. pulling you away exactly yeah life keeps happening and 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 none of the other stuff stops right the tournament still happen sponsor obligations, getting everything set up for the next year. Like that's, that's always been like the worst part. Now you hear a lot of guys say that is like the start of the season because it's so much just back and forth. And then once you actually get into the flow of the season, it's like, it's nice. Like you're just doing your, you know, normal routine and stuff like that. But yeah, life keeps happening. Nothing, nothing else is stopping for you though. <laughs> Of all, sure. the, of all the jobs as a pro angler, is that the one that you feel better? Like when you can get just launch the boat, let me go do my thing. Is that where you feel the best? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think I don't like looking at the calendar and seeing back to back tournaments, but once we're in it, like once you're doing it, yeah, I like it. You know, it's one of them that like you look at it and it's like sends like a negative vibe to you because you know, like all the planning and prep that's going to go into it and the, you know, one event run to the next, but actually when we're doing it, I like it like fishing wise. I like it because you're just, you're going, you're fishing, you know, there's not a lot of hoopla in between. 
um, you know, cause you're just locked in on the water every single day as much as you can be. So there's not a lot of other things to be thinking about. So, um, I do appreciate those times. Um, but yeah, that's probably the best time is when you just get out in the morning and you know, like, this is the only thing I want to think about today. <laughs> Pretty nice. <laughs> And I think that's honestly what makes the sport of competitive fishing so tough because you have to like to, to win. I honestly believe you yeah. have to be that, like you can't even be thinking like there's no, it's not like there's fishing. Blinders. It, yeah, it's blinders. Know, I try to tell people it's not like fishing. When I see people like the amount of anglers that I'll pull up on that get startled by me, you know what I mean? Because they're so focused on the next cast and stuff like that. Is right. that how you compete? I, I get pretty zoned in. I'm all, I've always said like, I'm really good at being like, like single-minded and mm -hmm. like, I, I call it dumb. Like, just like, you know, zone, you know what I'm saying? Like you just really good at doing one thing. Yeah. If I get too many things going on, I don't like it. But if I'm in the, you know, if I'm editing a video, I want to edit that video, knock it out, boom, you know, be done with it. Uh, if I'm fishing, like I want to be fishing. I can't, I can't be sitting here doing all this other stuff you know, while I'm fishing, even when I'm practice fishing, like I don't, I don't know the last time I set up a GoPro, which is probably bad, but like, I want to go fishing. You know, I want to fish. Don't care what's going on. It's bad enough to pull your phone out and take a picture of the fish you caught <laughs> <laughs> because you're ready to make the next cast. So, um, yeah, I, I get pretty, like I said, pretty single minded when it comes to that stuff. I, I think you have to, I mean, I really do. You yeah. You know, you just said a little while ago that, I mean, you've reached that point that you, you know, you want to qualify for the classic every year, but you want to win. So, right. Riddle me this. How do you, like, would you yeah. go into the off season and look back on last year and be like, because you, I put it in other business terms and you know, it's the same when you shoot a show, do whatever. You're like, okay, we can do this, this, and this better. Or here's where we're weak. Here's where we're strong. Do you evaluate yourself at the end of a season like that? Yeah, for sure. Like just going back and, you know, 99% of this whole game is mental, you know, it's mental for that week on that body, that fishery. You don't look back on too many times that, you know, a lake is one off of the same spot or the same pattern. Like it hardly ever happens. So it's that, that time frame that you're in. And it's like, every time I go out for practice, so at some point in practice, I'm thinking someone right now, is figuring out how to win this thing. Someone yeah. right now within our group that's on the water right now, I'm like, why the hell isn't it me? Like get your stuff together and figure out what's going on. And I think that's my, my biggest downfall is probably it takes me a while to kind of start dialing stuff in, you know, and i have not one, I'm not a big fan of a lot of practice time. Like I'm, I don't know why I'm not, I don't want to be there for a week. Cause I feel like I'll, I will get dialed in and then the stuff's changing, right? Uh, a lot of that really comes from the opens where I'd spend a week somewhere or whatever. Yeah. By the time I've got blue dots from one end to the other, it's like, where you go, you know? Uh, but just di like getting, getting dialed in on something fairly quickly. And then by the tournament, you're already rolling with it where I feel like the past couple of years, I start rolling with it days two or day three. Right. And I'm going, you idiot, you dummy. What are you doing? You had this stuff available to you this whole time. And it took you till now. So my biggest thing is trying to zone in on what, you know, the fisheries given you and go with your gut and stop trying to make other things work. Like you think they were supposed to work prior to practice starting. You yeah. know what I mean? You'll pick you like, like you're going, you're like, man, this is looks like throwing a frog and you pick up a frog and you, third cast you get one to blow up you know right then they're probably eating a frog yeah what do i do i put it down i start flipping again uh no you probably should have kept throwing a frog hunter and then the second day of the tournament throw the frog and you get bit oh i'm gonna keep throwing it so, so was, stuff like that was going mm -hmm. back to the flipping was that what they were biting is that uh, why you felt you had that to? or that or the notion that this is how this is how you need to catch them you know, yeah. you go into it with that preconceived notion. So having, having the insight of knowing what the fishery is supposed to set up like, that's great. But trying to force something that isn't happening 
you know, we all know enough as anglers, you know, when you feel something's right or when you need to punt and pick up a shaky head, right? Yeah. Like, you know, you feel that sense and just going with that sooner and picking up what the fishery's given you and, and rolling with it faster because then, you know, the next day, the next day you're, you're learning more, you're obtaining more information, you know, you're getting all the dialed in where it's like, it seems like every time I leave a tournament, I'm like, I felt pretty good. I, I wish I, I, I could go out again today just to fish because yeah. I'm expanding on this stuff, you know? Uh, but that's, that's all a lot of inexperience, you know, starting fishing in 2000, basically the opens in 13 fishing tournaments, 2012. So still learning a lot of lessons, but it's, you know, figuring that stuff out. And that's where the, like the best guys in the world, they can start breaking stuff down so fast and it's all mental. Like they know what to do and they got that head, that, that mindset that they're going to catch them no matter what, wherever they're at, they drop them on a pond. They're going to catch them. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like that's the combination to win in a blue trophy. I know there a lot of it is in there. <laughs> yeah. Who are they? You know, when you look at great winners or people, like you said, there's people that can close the deal on it. You as an angler, what, what are so a few of the them. names that, I mean, there, I know there's a ton of them, yeah. but there has to be some that you look at and you're like, I need to get a little bit more Wait. of that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, I got Wheeler right down the road from me now. So he lives like 12 minutes from me. And, you know, we've just gotten pretty close just because we're, you yeah. know, geographically and just being around him. It, there's a lot to say around just being around people that have that, you know, winning mentality and stuff. That kid doesn't like to lose anything, no. for one. So, <laughs> no. But and, and he's got a. Fishing, like he's a different dude. Like when you hang with him yeah. and I mean this in all the respect in the world, he's a different dude because, yeah. but almost when you hang with Kevin, he's a different dude too. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? But I'm you notice that, right. You know, you hang around Greg Hackney, like he's going to be different. Like you, re and, and I've ha been around people in the motocross industry. I've been around people, you know, people like Brian Robinson, you yeah. know, top level elite. They're all a little different. Yeah. But they have that winning, I don't, I don't know what you want to call it, but they're winners. You know what I'm saying? Like they all possess that, that when you're around them, you notice it. It's just funny that you mentioned that because I feel the same way. <laughs> yeah, no. And, and, I'm, but I don't think that that's a bad, like, I think that, and that only builds. I mean, right. I don't feel that, I don't feel Wheeler's very different today than the first right. day I met him. I just right. feel like the aura around him grew. But he yeah, felt right. that from the first day he picked up a rod almost, it seemed. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And he's got the confidence. And so just being around, you know, when you're around that yeah. and you feel like, you know, people like Jordan Lee, you know what I mean? Like just talking with Jordan and stuff like guys are freaking good. And just listening to them, seeing them fish, uh, it starts to rub off onto other people. It's almost like uh, you see high school football teams. Yeah. State champions, 98, 99, 2000, 02, 04. Why? Because that younger group seen that older group and they're like, I want to, I'm going to be that group. You know what I'm saying? But if you have a losing squad and they keep losing and losing the younger group coming up, they, they see that losing mentality, like it just fizzles. So putting yourself around good people, like, or in that winning situation, like, I think that is a big deal as well, at least to help give you insight, like, Hey, this is a obtainable. It's not, you know, fairy tale stuff. Like everybody, everybody's normal dudes, but you know, they, you're talking to the man right now, you know, just like Kevin, like he's normal dude, but he's the man. <laughs> yeah. He's just normal. Just put your pants. He puts his pants on just like you. So it's uh just being around it, it it definitely helps. So is it I mean you see what they're doing, but but is it also seen that the their work ethic or like what what areas do you look at, at Wheeler or any of these guys and be like, I need more of that, or is it just is it just time, you know, catching up from starting so late, really? Yeah, I'd say both. I mean, uh Jacob definitely puts his time in one hundred percent. It's undoubt and it's it blows my mind what people see just from the tournament side, but the amount of time that he spends with social media as well. From, <laughs> and so 
<laughs> like, yeah, it definitely makes me want to step my game up because, it, I mean, what he's got going on, he's so dialed in, him and Brody, and they got their, you know, filming and everything. And he's wide open. It's nonstop all the time. Uh, so, to see, yeah, to see that, that's definitely motivating. But I'd say, you know, seeing more situations, but also having that confidence that, you know, you've gone through stuff. And uh, at the end of the day, I just, you know, fishing is situations, right? Yeah. You know, someone like, someone like Rick Klun, and he's seen the same situation a hundred times over, you know, he's going to make that adjustment 10 times faster than what I would. Um, so, you know, just, you only get so many seasons a year, you know, you get what spring, summer, fall, winter. And if you're, you know, on this pond or that pond, you get to see a certain situation. That's it. Next year rolls around. So it takes a long time to get that going on different regions of the country, certain bodies of water. Um, it's a weird game. It's a never, never ending battle that you're always, you know, fighting with the fish. I, I, you know, obviously we're fishing against other guys, but it ultimately comes down to you and that dang bass in the water, yeah. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, and, and people can say what they want. I mean, but it doesn't matter. You catch the five right fish every day and, and all yes. of the rest takes, I mean, every problem exactly. in pro fishing is fixed one way. Catch yeah. more fish. I mean, as sad as exactly. it is, that is honestly, yeah. it fixes truth. everything. Yeah. Do, you, do you think that speed of decision making? Do you how much of that do you think comes from having those experiences, and how much of that just comes with confidence? Because because I think you know what I mean when you see an angler yeah. firing for angler of the year, that's what yep. you see. It's like there's no second guessing. It's not like. Should I fish that point? It's like, yeah. I'm fishing that point, and then I'm doing this. And no question about it. Yeah, it's 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 so much instinct, right? Like, you start to get into the – just you, you wake up in the morning, and you walk outside the morning of the tournament, and you just feel the humidity or something. It's like springtime. You hear the birds, and you're like, yeah, they're going to bite today. Or it's like north wind, and you're like, okay, I'm kind of second-guessing what I'm going to do. Like, you already know. You have that feeling like this is going to work or it's not. Um, just that, that instinct side of it. But yeah, when you, when you're in that zone and you're making right decisions, everything just keeps like compounding. It, it feels like for me, like you, you don't second guess it as much and it's vice versa. If you start making bad decisions or the day starts to get, you know, spiraling, that's, yeah. you know, the <clears throat> other side of it. Like you got to somehow rope that in, get you a couple bites and go from there. So, uh, but you see the good guys, you don't, you don't see that stuff going on all the time, but they go through it a lot. Oh and yeah. They still come, they still come in with 12 or 13 pounds and it could have been a you know, hellacious day. And they freaking, yeah, you, know, you wouldn't know it though. And it'd be me in the same position. I come in with two. <laughs> 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 so, uh, that minim, yeah. Minimizing the damage. They're really good at that. D your spot. When you go into a tournament, <clears throat> How many of like just on day one, let's say, because I know everything yeah. changes as it moves on. But day one, how many of your spots are like planned and how many of your spots are kind of instinctual? Like you go to an area and you're like, you know what I mean? Is it set out? Yep. I'm going to hit this, this and this. Or do you just kind of follow where your gut's taking you? Yeah, it usually depends. Like, obviously, the type of fishery that. We're yeah. On. But usually it's like an area or two that you kind of zone in on and then it's. And it's always for me, like get through day one, because you don't know what's setting up. And I've, maybe a lot of guys are the same way, but you don't know if there's going to be 20 boats that found the same thing, or if yeah. you're going to be the only one. And then do you go there? Do you hammer on them or, you know, do they not bite? So for me, it's, it's kind of like, you got, you got to roll with it. You kind of have a couple places to start with. And then once, once that unfolds, I'll figure out what I'm going to do from there. Um, but I really don't have too many things set in stone because I've done it too many times where it's like, you start trying to run what you did in practice, you're wasting your time. Like you got to pick up the pieces that you've got from practice and then keep building. Like if I felt like if I could just keep practicing, I would be so much further ahead if I acted like practice in the tournament. And, I'll, and you know, most of the time I do, but as soon as you start trying to go back and be like, well, I caught one off this single tree and you run to that one single tree, guess what? Jimmy already caught him or whoever else. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it, you can't do that. But 
Uh, if I can get through day one, then day two, I'm like, all right, this sucked. This didn't, I'm gonna roll with this and I'm going to, I'm going to stick to this for sure. You know? And then I, day, day two is usually better, (laughs) but it's usually better for a lot of guys. You know, we, that's another day on the water. It's another day of learning. Um, but that's pretty much been, been my deal. Yeah. And there's a weird little part of gambling on day one. Cause you see it all the time. Like I'll see the yep. first 10 guys come to the trough and I'm there before I've even gone on stage and they're happy. And then by the time they get on stage, they're not near as happy as they were when I first saw them. Cause another <laughs> 25 guys have got to the troughs and they realized that the weight they had doesn't have them where they thought they were. Gonna right. Be. Yep. Um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's an amazing sport that way. How did you go from freaking motocross, which is like a fast sport? <laughs> like, <laughs> how long is the average motocross race in, in like minutes? Yeah, most of the time. You're, uh, if you're doing professional stuff, it would be like outdoors, 25, 30 minutes. And then indoors is like 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get like, You would think, okay, <clears throat> like there would be some parallels between the two sports, but there's... Right. I don't know None. if there's more opposite sports. It's it, it's probably because all the people that get injured in racing, you can you can actually go fishing and still <laughs> injured. <laughs> so there's a there's a lot of guys that race that fish, which is a cool thing. Like I don't know how that translates, but they do. Um, but yeah, it's just basically competition at the end of the day. Like obviously Fletcher was fishing, and then. And I wasn't doing anything. And next thing I know, I start fishing. And it wasn't until I fished a tournament. Because honestly, when I was just fishing, I'm like, all right, I caught one bass. I spent eight hours out here. I wasted my whole damn evening and caught one bass. That happens a lot. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Especially when you're first starting out. Yeah. I, I, own, I own two rods to my name. I'm fishing out of a John boat. And I caught one bass in eight hours. I don't go fishing for another two weeks. Until I started fishing tur- like local tournaments is when I'm like, I started fishing, like trying to learn. <laughs> it's weird though. Like fishing is that way. Like I have friends. We've all, everybody has friends like this, but there's friends that I know that if tournament fishing went away tomorrow, they literally wouldn't fish anymore. Like I, I, or very little. Me. Really? It would probably be me. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like fishing. I like it, but I couldn't. I couldn't validate the time that I'm spending. It, it, I guess it's the same way with racing too. Yeah. How do you how do you race and break all these bones? Well, at the time that was a you know part of the part of getting to my dream of racing yeah. professionally. You know, if I got tore my ACL or whatever, like broke my arm, whatever, because that's you know I wasn't doing it just to do it. Right? It wasn't yeah. like just a hobby. Where fishing, if it became just a hobby to me. I definitely wouldn't be sp- spending as much time on the water. Um, maybe if I was like in Mexico or like South Texas or something. But it's also um, what addicted you to fishing. Like I get that exactly. because that's, yeah. I mean, I was obsessed by fishing long before I ever fished a tournament. And then tournaments just became an evolution. But but right. I get it. Like I totally understand that. I mean, I think yep. there's people like that in every, every sport, really, that yeah. I mean – wouldn't do it if it wasn't a competition (laughs) exactly it's like you know when you're out there regardless of what happens every day like you know there's a goal at the end of it like i'm out here for a reason i'm out here preparing i'm you know working on cast whatever it is like there's you can validate your reasoning for if i was just like just out fishing (laughs) i would probably feel the same way as when i started i'd be like what are you doing out here man (laughs) you only (laughs) caught four fish you suck (laughs) (laughs) Uh, One of the things that you hear more often now, I think, in the Elite Series is people working together, like, you know, two anglers working together and that sort of thing. Do you work with anybody or share information with anyone on the Elite Series? I do. I, I talk with, like, Skyler. Hamilton, yeah. Um, but I don't, I'm, I don't really get too big into that because – Usually what happens is group A tells group B that tells group C and D. And at the end of the day, but three days of practice, we got 90% of the elite field yeah. all know the same information. I don't, I don't care who's talking, like yep. no matter what, this group talks to this group or they don't talk at all, but you always know there's going to be one leak. 
Yeah. <laughs> and then it, it, because it's funny, because years ago, I told I had told someone I don't even know. I caught, you know, I caught a big one like on a spinner bait. Yeah. OK, someone comes up to me at the meeting and is like, hey, what color skirt are you throwing on that spinner bait? De- don't even talk to the dude. <laughs> so it went from like, bing, 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 bing. Like you could draw a map of, you know, the elite series field. But eventually all the information gets around like half of gets this half, half gets this. <laughs> I really do believe that. And uh, I, I want to make a meme at some point of like every angler that I see that has their like this. <laughs> well, they elite could be series, talking, talking to their hey, wife. Oh, elite series practice right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, come on guys. It's bass fishing. Just go fish. But well, no, I think it's, it screws me up too. <clears throat> the, what you you just gotta said have is- a good group. You can have a good group, but what you just said is something that every rookie hears and every, the, the thing, don't, don't listen to the doc talk, fish your way yeah. and stuff like, how come that seems like the most obvious advice that nobody listens to in their first, like, it seems like yeah. you watch every rookie and you're just like, yeah, they're listening. Like you can almost, right. It's so rare that they don't listen. It, uh, it's, I want to say it, it's like desperate, desperate in the sense that, the, the pressure of that week, you know, you're in practice. Yeah. You start, you know, you aren't on, you aren't on a bite or you don't feel good about it. Next thing you know, these thoughts start creeping in and that's what screws you up every single freaking time. Cause you're not listening to your gut anymore. You're yeah. trying to force speed. You're trying to force speed what Jimmy told you. Jimmy didn't tell you you had to be at the back of the crate or two thirds of the way back to be throwing it. And it had to have wind on it and it had to be, <laughs> Whatever, you know, those are the parts. And so like just year after year, I've, my circles become smaller in that sense, because it, it really messes with me, just me personally, because, you know, you're taking in all this stuff. I'd rather be the dodo. That's like, man, this Creek's on fire. Yeah. I have no idea. Hell, there's only seven bass that live in the whole thing, but I'm going (laughs) to catch all seven of them. (laughs) Nobody else is around. No, and no one's at that end of the lake because, you know, they all, whatever, like the information deal, but I don't know. It just, it doesn't work for me. It works for some guys, but it doesn't work for me. Yeah. I mean, you got, you, that is the one thing that is clear. You got, I mean, I say that all the time on stage, but it's not just on stage. It's like, you need to be you. If you try to be yes, like, I don't care how much, like you go up there and try to impersonate Gerald Swindle. It's not going to work. You try, but you try to be yourself and you see every example when people are themselves. Right. It works. Cause that, that I mean, yeah. you're being genuine and you're really, you're learning. I mean, I think there's yeah. a, you know, that that's such a weird, and I think it's weird when people come because if you look at some of the situations where somebody comes through college or whatever, and they qualify, well, they've looked yep. up to a lot of these guys for years. Right. So it's hard yeah, for it's them tough. to, in their head, be like, I'm a rookie. It's my second tournament. I didn't make a paycheck last week. Uh, Greg Hackney's, I'm not going to listen to what Greg Hackney's saying or what I've heard yeah. he's saying and stuff like that. Yeah. And that, and, and a lot of that too, like, obviously just, I've had a lot of help yeah. from you know people around me that's already gone through it. And, and like you said, you almost have to live it to learn it. You almost, you know, you get through a, a year or two or a couple of years and then you go, ah, uh huh. And you start to look back, like all those situations, you're like, yeah, I got burned on that. And, or whatever, like you start to realize um, and and learn those lessons. And the only way to do it is to go through it and just hope that it doesn't screw you up too bad, (laughs) that you're not relying on it that much. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a weird, weird world we live in. What's your biggest (laughs) single motivator to be successful on the elite series? Like what is in your heart? What is the, what is that moment? I want to win a blue trophy because I want to win a blue trophy. That's it. I, I don't know why. I mean, that, that, I guess that would be like the, I would, I, I don't care. I would win a blue trophy right now. If you told me I couldn't win a classic, not that I don't want to win the classic, but I just want to win. Like, I don't care what it is. Yeah. I just want to win, like put, put a win under my belt, but whatever event doesn't matter. 
I don't care. <laughs> it's just so hard to, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it it's is. a hard thing to accomplish. Like I wouldn't yeah. even imagine in the motocross world, wins and high placing yeah. finishes are a lot more frequent in this sport. I mean, right. this sport is, it's, it's definitely true. I mean, the best guys win how many times, you know what I mean? And it's, it, it's a fantastic career for X amount of wins where other sports it's, they're more dominant. Like it's more consistent. The fishing is the furthest thing from consistent, you know, as far as dealing with all the conditions and variables. So, uh, yeah, just, I, I don't know. I just, I, I want to win. <laughs> like I said, whatever it is, it's just like, gets to the point you get tired not tired of it, but like you start to turn the next page. Like, yeah. how do I, you know, how do I do that? And I think everybody probably goes to that at, at some point. Um, you know, so it's, for me, it's like, how do you, how do you get yourself in position to qualify, but how do you still take those risks on those weeks that you feel like you need to take those risks and how much, you know, and again, the good guys are still taking those risks and they, it, on paper, you would never know the risk that they gambled and potentially, you know, they got a top 10, but they were shooting for the win or they got, you know, 60th or 50th and they could have finished 20th, but they gambled, rolled the dice. So such a mind game. The whole thing. It's crazy. It, it really <laughs> is like people spend their whole life throwing lures into cans and practicing that crap. None of that matters. Like literally yeah, everybody. Like, yeah. Everybody knows be- how to fish. There's some great anglers that I've seen fish and yeah. and they kick my butt all over the lake. I'm not saying it, but they're yeah. great, but technically they're not that sound. And you're like, but they've got, I mean, they are, they sound. Got, they're all, you guys all are, but you know what I'm right. saying? Like there's, it's not what the best think. caster doesn't win every week. Right. Yeah. Where you're putting it at is all that matters. <laughs> it, it's such but, a weird thing. And I think, why do you think it is so mental? Is it just because it's so long? You know, like other sports, you got to focus yeah. for a s- short period of time, and and with a long competition day, it's hard to stay, yeah, into it. Yeah, it's a, I mean, four day event. Then you add in practice. That's a lot of time. And not only that, but it's, it's that everything is a decision. Everything you're doing on the water is a decision based on the time. So, what's your percentage of catching a bass in each situation? Uh, and, and it goes by like that and you could be on the best stuff, but you didn't make their best decision that week at that time on that body of water. Doesn't matter. Somebody did, somebody won, but it's like, you got, you know, that week you were the best if you won. Um, it, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I definitely- can keep talking about it. <laughs> it it's. I mean, it's one of the most, and it's the most frustrating thing because you hear people say, like, if, once I learned to win, and then, you know, you're kind of saying that too, but, like, it's, it, well, then people get know, there, I'm and not. it's, no, but it, you know what I mean? Like, they get there, and they win, and then it's like, I got to stay here. You, you know what I mean? The pressure yeah. never. Well, that's always, yeah, that's always yeah. going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> that's just human nature. <laughs> yeah. We no. want the next thing. It's true. I got a new car. Now I want a Tesla. <laughs> yeah. I mean. So if, I, if I get on a hotel treadmill, which I don't do often, but when I do, it doesn't matter if the man beside me is 85 years old, just so he knows we're racing. I mean, if there's two <laughs> treadmills beside each other, I mean, that's just how. I, right. That's how I don't we know are. if everyone's like that, but most of the people I hang yep. out with are like that. <laughs> yep. Every time playing ping pong, you want to win like cornhole doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, it, it is. It's crazy at how much the mental game and like I said, it's it's such a long, drawn out week that you got to be focused in because it only takes it only takes five bites. Yeah, you know, but it takes you all day to amass what you need, and you know, moving and and it's just a chess game. So yeah, still trying to master it, master it, <laughs> muster well, I, it, master it, whatever. I, I mean, um, I well, you know, mustering. Do you know what I know? I actually learned what mustering means. Mustering means a gathering of people because we had some construction happen on our street and they put a freaking sign right in front of my house said mustering zone. So I had, oh to, my I had to Google what mustering Look, was. I'm like, what's going to happen in front of my house here? They're mustering. <laughs> it's pretty bad. You know, you're not the only one that had to look that up too. Like people are driving past looking it up on their phone. <laughs> yeah. What is going on here? And as soon as you find it out, you have to say it because you sound like, a, I know what mustering means, but, uh, 
Well, I thought it was like mustering up the strength. Oh, they, yeah, I guess that's another angle. Different, Maybe. I like different, yeah, Webster. Yeah. I don't know. I probably tried to sound get, smart. And it get the tech guy stupid. to look up Webster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jamie, get on it. Uh, he didn't show up today, so we'll have to <laughs> check it out. Actually, you guys watch and check it out. But uh, Hunter, I didn't call you by the wrong name once during this whole exchange. But, uh, dude, I, I look forward to hanging out with you this season. And and I really, I mean, I I know you say you've got a lot to learn. But, dude, to literally be doing this for 10 years, it's incredible what you've accomplished. Like, you know what I mean? To go from, like you said, 2012 was your first competition year, right? So. Yep. That's 10 years of competition, basically. And, dude, you're right. fishing at the top level. Um, you've qualified. This will be, what, your third classic coming up, I think? Yep, third so, one. I mean, it's going pretty good, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I, it's, But, it, uh, again, it's all wanting a little bit more. You know how it is. That's just how, that's how we are. So, has it already been 45 minutes? Oh yeah, time flies. It's been more than that. Dude. I mean, we keep talking for as long as you no, want. No, no, it's good. I just wondering, like, it feels like fifteen minutes. Oh, it's uh, oh, my God, it, it feels like fifteen minutes. <laughs> uh, but to us, but the viewers, I mean, they think this oh, been yeah, going for like, hours. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. <laughs> how weird is that? The YouTube world, like how people. It's like weird that. You know, I see things all the time where I'm like, I don't like that or I don't. Do, but people feel that like, you know, your video was good, but there was that point where you put this shot in. And I didn't like it. It's just weird how people feel. Really? That, I, don't you experience that on that, YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't read. I, to be honest with you, I don't consume a lot of YouTube in general. As bad as that sounds. Like, how much do you watch? You watch a lot? Uh, I watch quite a bit, but I don't watch near as much as most would probably think. Just because like, the more I make, the less. Exactly, I, it, that's it, what I was going to say. It's true, like, you're not you're not watching. Uh, yeah, it's it's crazy, but. And it, I don't it, watch it's, fishing it's, stuff any like a lot. Like I don't. I watch fishing educational right. and different stuff. Like a, a lot of cool videos come out regularly, but I don't right. watch interviews. Like I know you were on um, Bass Talk Live, and, and I watch yep. Panger. And Jeffrey's before I watch right. that almost on a daily basis, but because I knew we were doing an interview, I'm like, I can't even listen to that interview or <laughs> halfway through yeah. the interview. I'm going to somehow it'll end up. We'll talk about the same topic or something right. like that. So for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't watch a lot of it, but I read every comment. They drive me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I can. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, how I do read you, them all. I, okay. Don't. Can, can we, can we discuss your, the short videos? Yeah. How do you get the fish eating the baits? Like that is, that's so awesome. It's, and like, it, you have, is it like a lake that's near your house or what? Yeah. Well, it's a lake that's near my house. Yes. And it is, uh, and, it, and I, I shoot them on a few different lakes, to be honest. Um, but there's that many of them. Well, like, yeah, well, I've, I've got some of them kind of trained to do some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, not tra That's they're so not. Tra awesome. I mean, it's, it's literally uh, some of those things you got to spend an hour and you get what like, thank God for shorts, because to be honest, initially I had all these like when COVID started and our crazy country shut down boat ramps and everything. That's like I've done a lot of swimming with fish and stuff, but I really was like, I need to shoot like I was busy shooting no stuff way. like I, I literally start. That's when I really started shooting a lot of stuff like underwater yeah. and now. To be honest, dude, I'm so obsessed with it. Like, if me and you it were is. to go fishing, I would honestly, if you said, okay, I'm going to fish and you're going to swim or shoot under, I'd be just <laughs> as happy because you learn and so you much them. from them. Yeah. You can see them swimming. Well, I, they just yeah. swim all around you. Well, yeah. If you, if you slow and you move, you know what I mean? I mean, a lot of them, right. I'm you shoot on a pole, but then there's a lot of times that I'm just swimming with them, which is the coolest, if you ask me, because I'm I'll come like right thinking you got. You. I'm thinking you got a koi pond that's like just I wish. <laughs> I wish. I see those guys like with the that Bama bass dude on YouTube has built like a five thousand acre lake. And I'm like, really? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's got a lot of yeah. subscribers. Come on, subscribers, right. pick it up. We'll build a big pond. <laughs> that would be cool. Well, you don't have to. You got them swimming around, right? I mean, public, yeah, public not... places. Well, whatever. Doesn't matter. No, but if it's, you it... can be around bass, that's pretty dang cool. 
Yeah. Like well, it, it, like you're saying, and watch them. You can anywhere, dude. Like smallmouth, especially. Like you yeah. can literally swim, go to any rocky shoal and start banging rocks together. And I swear to you, in the like in the right months, smallmouth come looking. Like the, I know it's it. everywhere. I mean, uh, well, we I shot some stuff on the St. Lawrence River with Overstreet. And he thought it was hilarious. He's like, how are you going to find fish? And I'm like, they'll come and go down there and start banging rocks and stuff. And they come like they, they're they oh inquisitive. God. And you yeah. guys are, I got to use 2.5 pound test. And my fat ass is down there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> swimming around. They're swimming up to you. I know they just chase the boat. The old timers up at Erie, they used to drag chains. You ever heard, I've heard of that? that? Yeah, I've heard that. Drag, drop chains. So if you see chains, on my boat next or this year <laughs> on the back deck strapped down. You'll know what I'm doing. Just yeah. One big anchor, just dragging it around. I, I don't think them. it's the worst idea, dude. I'm telling you, they're inquisitive <laughs> creatures. Um, just dragging your power poles around. <laughs> <laughs> There's a special rhythm you got to give. Yeah. Lift them every once in a while. No, it's, no but I, I'm it's, obsessed with that stuff. And I love, I, like, cool. honestly, I, I love that. Like it almost, to a fault. Like I shoot so yeah. much. Like I have, I have so much of it now that I can't even get through because you, you know, you, that's awesome. It, it's like, there's hours with nothing of a fish that swims, you know, your half of an eyeball. You know what I mean? I uh, didn't yeah. get it, but <laughs> when it works, when it works, it's, it's, a, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, it's awesome. You couldn't even, you couldn't see that footage five or 10 years ago. No, like we li- did not ha- hardly have it. They used to have that old, what, what was that? old video where it showed the bass like coming up and mouthing the baits and stuff. Oh, lo- loudmouth bass. Glenn Lau. Yeah. That yeah. was, that was cool. the that so was now, cutting edge when it came out. Yeah. 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 It'd come up and eat the bait and let go of it and you would never know that it was on there. Yeah. Yeah. Which blows your mind. That happens. Like that's the other thing that I've learned from doing it. I mean, do, do you think that you can feel every bite? And you can't. Don't. I don't care what you're using. Really? Like, there's times when, you know, because a lot of times I'll be in the water and I'll have somebody casting and stuff like that. And there's times when I'm like, he's got it. And the person above, which is an excellent angler, does Doesn't not know. know. Like, you just, and if you can't see it, it. Yeah. I mean, they do. Like, the and the how smart they get and the things you learn. Like, here's one of the things that I've noticed. There's, like, you know, when you see... um like you, we assume too much. Like a fish doesn't ever, like we assume it's that big, like TV commercial eat with the big mouth and stuff. And if you look in it, yeah. they eat everything different. Like they'll eat a perch like that. They'll eat a perch right. a lot more aggressive because they want to kill it. But a shiner, yeah. a shiner is when you get like the big open mouth because they can fold it. It's just amazing uh, how they know all those things. And, right. and here's the other thing that I learned, dude, and this blows my mind. This How many good. times have you done this stupid tip about throwing a frog and you get to the edge of the grass or whatever pads or whatever you're fishing and then you kill it? Yeah. That's the worst thing to do. I have footage oh, of live frogs and the, as soon as it stops moving, like a fish is coming and as soon as that thing stops moving, the fish goes and it'll sit there and the frog will sit there and sit there and sit there for the longest good. time and then as soon as the frog goes tick, whoosh, it smokes it. Like it, it's, so you just keep it going. I, from my experience, I mean, uh, if they that's won't eat a crazy. live frog that's sitting still, they're probably not going to eat my rubber frog. <laughs> is my opinion. Very but, true. Yeah, very true. Yeah, that's, dude. That's a yeah. You learn a bunch. And how they I'm just a, sit there and stare at something. Yeah, move around. No. God. And how they don't always eat it the way you would assume. Like there's stuff where yeah. baits come and. And I've got footage of like a smallmouth and it's like coming straight forward. And you're like, it's going to smoke it. And then the smallmouth goes, Woof! and you're like, what is it doing? And it comes at it from a whole other angle, you know, just because of the way the right. sun's hitting it. And it, we know, and, and none of it's a law because every time you think that like, this is what you have to do, then you see the exact opposite happen. It's right. Uh, it's weird. Yeah. I'm obsessed with that. Like I could, if somebody said to me tomorrow here, just shoot underwater videos. You like, game uh, on. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> like I wouldn't want to stop MC and I love that too, but I, I just, right. I, it's such a weird, 
because it's a the different whole environment. Yeah, ideal. it's yeah, it's right. it's super relaxing for me, but it's also like it's just. And I think if if every if those shots were easy to get it, it probably wouldn't be as cool. You know what I mean? To me, like it's right. it's weird. But, yep. uh, yeah, yeah, they definitely horror. are not easy to get. <laughs> no, I can <laughs> see you sitting there waiting. Oh. What are they doing today? How much has it? How much have you seen the weather affect them? Oh, dude, it's a hundred. It's everything. Like it doesn't like really? even fish that I say that you know. There's fish that get used to me and stuff like that. Everybody's right. fish like that, but it doesn't matter if things are wrong. They don't eat. Like, I don't care. They won't eat live so, bait. They won't eat. Like there's times when you can throw a lure in see, front of a fish and like, and if it doesn't want to eat, it it's, off it's never going to eat. It just moves around it, you know, it avoids it. Oh but my gosh. so I don't, I don't, I used to feel like you could catch any fish if you repeatedly cast. And I think there's some of that to the truth, but I think there is, some fish that are just like they do what they want when they want, right? Like it's how how about this? How about the the time like the uh, time zones, like the the bite windows that oh, you always hear about? They're definitely I mean, we bite see, windows. yeah, we yeah. see it obviously yeah. live. You're watching it, watching the uh, live the the weights just boom, 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 boom. All oh, and bass track. Like, catch them. Yeah, bass, bass track really like, shows boom. it off. Yeah, like it's all of a sudden off. nothing, then. Vroom, everybody yeah, in the point, field point, caught point, a fish <laughs> and so you you see that as well like it, it could be slow and then all of a sudden they all just start snapping yeah and and when one snaps like the it's that is the truth getting one to go is the is the hardest one really and when one does well i mean there's sometimes that fish yeah. are just it's not tough but i mean like right generally you make one eat the others will um wow and and you're and seeing I, it Oh, dude, and here's the other cool thing. Um, <laughs> you know when you see fish like in Mexico and stuff like that, where you got two fish, one is in the other's yeah. mouth and they choke right. and stuff like that? I always thought, you know, people always said, well, fish, they can't realize size and stuff like that. And that, Dude, I am certain that that has nothing to do with that. I'm certain they that situation is feeding. When they get in a feeding frenzy, and I got tons of shots of them when they go, I got one shot where a large mouth and a small mouth gets stuck I've seen that in one. his mouth. I've seen that. Yeah. That's why they get them. stuck like that. They're not trying to eat. No, they're, they're going for the same bait fish or oh, whatever, and gotcha. they collide. Like, And it just, yeah. I've seen it so many times that I, I can't think it's the other way around. You know what I mean? I like, you, you don't think they're trying to eat each other or whatever. The one's trying to eat the other one. You think they're a school of fish chasing bait and yeah. they just happen to go yeah. collide. Yeah. I can see that. I mean, they're dang mad. I mean, a five pounders big enough to, but you see them all the time. Little ones too on social media, like, you know, had the other one. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It's very unfortunate timing, but makes sense. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's when we, when I caught that, the, the large ones small mouth doing that, I was like, I can't believe that just like number one in the video, like when you see it, your own eyes, it's so quick. You didn't know if it really happened, but when right. you see it, like I couldn't believe that we were able to capture it, but like I've seen yeah. over and over again, like I also think that a lot of times when we think a buddy fish is trying to steal a bait, mm -hmm. um, did they are, but they're not trying to steal it out of their mouth. I got footage of a lot of times a fish will eat a minnow and another fish comes up behind it and sucks it through their side of their gill, dude. Steal a lot, them. a lot. Like I've seen it wow. a lot happen. And I'm like, that's, that's what that's a, ba that's a bass gangster right there. <laughs> and think about it when you th like, I mean, they're both going for it. It's just wild mm -hmm. really. But, uh, Pocket I'm not victim. good. I'm bad at interviewing you. This all went in a weird Why? direction. Dude, we just figured out where it's going to, you're going to have dang, like learning tutorial videos on underwater stuff be nuts. I should we're, probably stop talking about we're, it. We're actually working on something like that with me. Use a lot sick. more underwater stuff. All right. Stuff. I'm sorry for even saying anything. No, no. People will be excited. People will be, no, I wouldn't cut anything out. I mean, it's all. Dude, I'm just, I mean, who knows? I mean, I might not ever get one to eat on camera again, but we got us some cool yeah. stuff over the year. And yeah. uh, it's, I, I just want to try and do it more. You know what I mean? Different places, right. anywhere without gators. Like, <laughs> I don't want any I part of gators say, or anything. The, the cool thing is, like, you're not doing it in the ocean. So, you know, yeah. you don't have to worry about something trying to eat you. I definitely wouldn't do it 
I Some do people though. Would, but I what? do, dude. I'm such a candy ass. Listen to me. You know, like I wear. No, a wet I don't want to do it. Yeah, but I wear a wetsuit. You know how it's yeah. got like the the zipper on the back, and it's always got yeah. like a long piece so you can pull your zipper. Well, dude, it. I mean, it's fresh water. Every time I'm down there, without fail, at some point, that little thing comes around in my peripheral, and I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> like a leech. <laughs> Yeah, I've had a lot of those. Snakes. That's that's that is a freshwater problem. A lot of leeches. Oh my. Yeah, yeah. But uh yeah, that's awesome though. Heck yeah. 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 Well, like it's it. been a good chat. <laughs> we went way over the time limit. Yeah. It's Sorry, all right. everyone. It's all right. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't a waste of your day. <laughs> no, no, I, I enjoyed it. And really that's that's the goal with this whole thing. For, Heck yeah. I mean, we can't guarantee anyone to watch it, so it might as well be fun for us. <laughs> 100 <laughs> percent. well here's the real question is it going to be above freezing by the time we get to palatka it's going to be warmer than it will be here i can guarantee you that that is true i can't yeah we can't complain it's cold there now though isn't it it is like it's, yeah i think yeah bass just had the the harris chain event today for yeah. college um i think the low was like down in high 30s wow but it's supposed to yeah it's supposed to be who knows? You never well, know. They'll be like those damn bass in your video. <laughs> it's the baits hit them on the nose. <laughs> oh, dude, I have like clips of like I should release the when they don't bite videos. Like there's some of them where you see the fish coming and you're like, this is going to be the greatest shot ever. And at the last second, it goes, <laughs> it throws you the fin. Why? On the way. Yeah. Why? Who knows? You know what I mean? That's the weird thing. Like and. And then you'll put it in another time and they won't even think about it. Like it's wild. How much, how much have you noticed an accent change a oh, fish's behavior? It, it's listen, we both work with Berkeley. I get it. And people are going to be like, well, they're just try it. Ah, like, just, honestly, just, like it's stupid. Yeah. Like it is like it there's times where, where we've like, I've tried it where I've already caught a fish. You know what I mean? And th- You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, not hooked it, but, like, it's bit yeah. several times. That's why right. we don't do the hook sets most of the time. So we can right. get it to bite a few times. And then you throw in max in afterwards, and it's like it's re-engaged. It'll bite it another however many times. Like, it's it's wild. Yeah. Made me a Small. bigger believer than even fishing. Right. Well, yeah, you're – yeah, exactly. You're seeing – it's not in a dang tank. You know, you're out in the wild. Yeah. Small mouth and large mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Not just small mouth. No, no. It, wow. uh, I think it's bigger on small mouth. Like I just think small. Yeah, mouth absolutely. Scent is a bigger deal to them. I, I yep. think, um, but, it, but it definitely, I mean, dude, I, it's to the point that I don't like throwing up. Like I power baits great, but if I can throw it in max scent, I max will scent. almost always throw it in max scent. Like I know <laughs> that good. That's so that wild. Good. I just get a lot of the, I get a lot of it, you know, but is it good for largemouth stuff? So that's why I was, you know no. what I mean? And I've known that and I kind of like didn't say a lot at the beginning because I catch him on max <laughs> it. And then I seen how much of small mouth happened and I'm like, I'm not going to say a whole lot about this. And then you look on guys boats, like the, on their decks and stuff after practice or whatever, and they'll have max in chunks or whatever. Like they'll have max in on, I'm yeah. just like, hmm, they, they, they figured it out. <laughs> More people figured it out than what I thought they would. Yeah. So. It's wild. It's, it is yeah. a, it, it's wild and it'll be interesting to see how it evolves too. Right. You know, a lot of right. those things become more effective for a certain period of time on certain fisheries and stuff, but right. I mean, everywhere I've gone, it's been, it's been pretty incredible. Yeah. But, for uh, sure. Hey Hunter, Heck, we gotta, yeah. we gotta stop this freaking interview. <laughs> Cut it out. Pull the plug. <laughs> All right. We're done. Well, thanks well, for having me. I thanks for coming you. on, and I look forward to watching <laughs> you hold a blue trophy this year. That's the goal. Just Number say it. Goal. Say I'm going to win the lead series because then when we replay it, you'll look like a genius. Yes, if you I don't am going win, to we'll win, never replay it. I'm going to win a blue trophy 2022 Bassmaster Elite Series. Make it happen. <laughs> Dave's going to make fun of me now for the next 10 years if I don't do it. No, it'll no. be replayed over and over. I want you to do it. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Hopefully. We'll try. And then, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Hunter tryout. You got it right. I know it's something that podcast hosts kind of just say 
We could have talked for hours, but but literally we could have talked for hours. Actually, that's the biggest problem I have with this show, if you want to know. It's, I mean, the goal is just to have a real, honest conversation, and, and I think we definitely do that week after week. But the hardest part is just stopping it, you know, containing it. You know, we try to stay around an hour, and sometimes we're we're more, and, and not very often we are less. But I thank all of our incredible guests, and I've got a question for you guys, because Believe it or not, you guys are the most important thing of the show. You really are. Without you guys, I mean, I'm literally just a dude talking to a camera. Um, so I appreciate each and every one of you here. The community here is incredible. Your comments, even if you're just giving me a fist bump, a thumbs up on the comments, it helps the algorithm. But I have a question for all of you because he came up during this interview. Hunter said if it wasn't for tournaments... He probably wouldn't fish as much as he does. And there is a lot of people like that, um, that they are addicted to tournament fishing. And then there's others that are addicted to fishing. And I think what brings them to the tournaments is it just, they like how it makes them a better angler and they're naturally competitive people. So my question of the week for you guys, our fine viewers, are you addicted to fishing? Are you addicted to competitive fishing? There's no right or wrong answer. Just make sure you put an answer, a comment, a like, a subscribe, all that stuff that validates all the time I waste talking to a computer. Enjoy being, have a good week, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe because Bob Cobb of the Bassmasters told you to. You hear?